Praise the name of the Lord. He is good all the time, right where you're at at home and here that you that are here to celebrate our worship team. We thank God for the wonderful spirit of worship. We thank God for our minister of music, Minister Joe Piggy, has been doing a phenomenal job all throughout these months, throughout this pandemic. We thank God for his faithfulness. And today we say happy birthday to Joe Piggy. We say happy birthday to Joe Piggy. We thank God for him. What a gift. What a wonderful gift. You see it in the chat. They're going to put some hearts and some high fives and some hand claps up in there to Minister Joe Piggy for his birthday on today. We honor the Lord for our E Church family and you that are around the world. We thank God for our Mountaintop family. And so glad to be back with you again. We're moving through these yet unpredictable times, but we thank God that he is a changeless God in a changing world. Uh, God has been faithful. Dr. House and I was throughout the time of Oak Thanks reflecting and praying and just looking back over our lives and thanking the Lord for how kind he has been in spite of it all. Uh, her song is that I won't complain, good days and bad days, ups and downs. It's part of life. But we thank God that he is faithful, a changeless God in changing times. Listen real quickly, if you haven't done it already, share this service with someone. Go ahead and find, find a couple of people you can reach out to and let them know that we are live and we're online and we're coming right to your living room, driving, driving down the highways with some of you, meeting you at the airport, wherever you're at in the world, around the world. Share this service with someone and let's go into the word of the Lord this morning. I want you to go with me to the book of 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter. I was reading this on the other evening and the Lord dropped it back in my spirit again. Uh, you might have heard me for sure go through this message a couple of times, but I do believe the Lord wants to say something to us this morning in 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter. I'm going to read one verse. I'm going to focus between verses 20 through 30. And you can go through that and look at it at your leisure. But I'm going to read one verse and then we'll get right into the lesson this morning. <clears throat> Second Chronicles 20 and 20. It sounds like vision, doesn't it? Um, from the New King James Version. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and ye shall be established. Believe his prophet, and ye shall prosper. I want to tag that scripture with uh, for, uh, Isaiah, the first chapter and verse 19. You've heard this, I believe, and I'm reading it from the New King James Version. He says, if you are willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Amen to the word of the Lord. My subject this morning is victory in the valley. Victory in the valley. This text often surprises me and awakens me with excitement every time I go through 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, and begin to read about King Jehoshaphat. How God could send forth the word to his people and send them into a valley with confidence of victory. It's amazing how God sets things up in our lives to bring us to our own personal victory. Victory, someone said, is hard to be seen at times when it appears that the battle keeps coming and coming and coming. It's hard to see the big picture when you're right in the middle of a valley. You don't know what to do and you keep hearing the word victory is certain, but it's hard to see victory when you're in the middle of a valley. I wake up morning after morning expecting a day of change. I'm talking to me, you listen. Yet it becomes another day of the same thing. The only hope is that I'm closer the day that I'm in than I was yesterday. Wake up wondering, is this it? Going to the mailbox, looking at the phone, going through your emails, wondering, is this it? but only to find out it's the same day. But I have a word of encouragement for someone this morning. You're gonna find victory right in the valley. It is faith and determination that speaks to me here. It keeps us going even when we're faced with challenges. Joseph's in Genesis 20, 50 and 20 says it like this in the NIV. Joseph says, you intend to hurt me 
what God intended for good to accomplish what is now being done to saving of many lives. Can you imagine this man's Joseph life? Another story, another time, but at the end of it, he speaks to say God was still in full control. God, you see everything, and God promised not ever to eliminate the problems, but he intends to strengthen us to meet the challenge. Life is filled with challenges. Being called to do great things for God does not come without challenges. Everyone has challenges. Don't think that they don't. Even the most talented and gifted person or successful people have challenges. They too must keep grounded. Challenges keeps you grounded. Sometimes in your life you have children and you want to know why these children are acting up so bad. Someone said the fruit don't roll too far from the tree. It's because of the challenges to keep you grounded so you to think that everybody else is out of order. What about your house and my house? Challenges keeps us grounded. Everyone has challenges, I so forestated, and they come in many ways for different people. It's a few challenges. Some people are challenged with loss, failure, setbacks, establishing one's moral compass, uh, the mindset, ministering or mastering my own personal mindset, overcoming my past stories, financial problems, physical problems, insecurities, fear, low credit, no credit, need credit, race or gender, it's problems. Emotional wounds from the past that presents themselves even in the presence that can keep us pursu not pursuing our dreams because of challenges. God often wraps challenges, wraps this mantle of greatness inside our weaknesses and sees the obstacles in front of us and around us and still requires us to accomplish great things. Who am I talking to out there? You know that you, God has called you to do it and you see the challenge and God knew the challenge was there before you got started. But he says, Gideon, you still are a mighty man of valor. You are a mighty woman of valor. Psalm 68 and 35, uh, the God of Israel is he who gives strength and power to his people. Psalm 68, 35, your strength and power comes from the Lord to meet the challenge. If God don't give us rough places and rough places to walk and mountains to climb or battles to fight, we won't grow. It's in the middle of these fights and battles and conflicts that we grow. I've been telling you for over the last eight, nine months, some of us are praying more now than we ever prayed in our whole life because we know that the only way we're going to get out of this one is through the spirit of prayer and by the help of the Lord. It's victory in the valley that brings faith and also it brings determination and that will bring profit. Before we get to our text, there's a story in Matthew's gospel, and Mark's gospel, I apologize, in the fifth chapter in verse 27 to 28 particularly, there was a woman there that was sick, but she heard that Jesus was coming by. She came behind him in the press of the crowd, and she said through the press of the crowd, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, if I could but touch his clothes, I shall be made well. It was her faith and determination that says today, I'm going for my miracle. I wonder if I can get someone to speak back to me in the chat and say today, I'm going for my miracle. Faith helps. And when you take the leap of faith, faith helps you move out. But determination helps you to hold on. Many of us like this woman from time to time are uh, pressing and reaching for miracles and breakthroughs due to the pressures of life, the infirmities and the afflictions. But we press on, we persevere with resilience, endurance, strength and sustainability. Today, whatever you believe in God for, keep your faith and hold on because you're going to find victory in the valley. God does not leave us to face these challenges alone, church. Instead, he stands beside us and teaches us and strengthens us. He also gives us to understand that he's with us in every step of the way. We're not facing this alone. The victory in the va valley will come by the Lord. Our text in 2 Chronicles 20, and we see here as we narrate, Judah is about to be invaded by Moab and Ammon and other foes, our, our enemies. The 
King Jehoshaphat is feared. He raises up this, this enemy, is, this enemy is risen up against him, so he's fearing the unimpossible defeat. He sets himself to seek the Lord, the text says, and Jehoshaphat proclaimed the fast and he called all Judah and everybody came from everywhere. They gathered together because of this enemy that was opposing Judah. There was no disorder or discomfort or confusion among them. They got together because they knew they were fighting at opposing force. They all looked to the Lord and gave that calm peace when you start looking to the Lord. Every now and then, get yourself from distracting, just being distracted by the problem and put your eyes back on the problem solver. In trouble and in trials, God's people show us how, Joseph had shown us how we ought to look at things, how we ought to face things. We should go to God with confidence. He's going to bring us through it with victory. The great company gathered together from every city of Judah to seek the Lord. And here we see the witness of one of the remarkable prayers made in scriptures. The King Jehoshaphat stood in the midst of the large congregation of the people and uttered this eloquent prayer. I paraphrase more of some of it. This earnest faith and this every breath of the prayer and every word was speaking to God. In the text, you see there, I think around verse 9 or verse 10 in your Bibles, but it goes on. He says that he addressed the God of heaven. He says that you rule over the kingdoms and nations. In your hand, there is power and might, and there is none able to withstand you. This is the good way to come to God and to approach him, remembering the wonderful almighty power of God. God knew before you knew. You're going to have problems this year, but he's still almighty and he's still capable of overcoming the problems and giving us the victory. Jehoshaphat goes on as he talks to the Lord. He begins to, 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 to check the record with God. In other words, he begins to look at how God has dealt with his people. He talks about Abraham being a friend of God, speaking of the covenant relationship with God. This is in his prayer. He begins to reaccount the count of Solomon, the dedication of the house of the Lord. In verse 9 down to verse 12, he begins to talk to the Lord. He says, if, 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 if distress or if dis disaster comes upon us, sword, which is the war they were facing, judgment and pestilence and famine, and we stand before you in this temple and in your presence, and your name is in this temple, and we cry out to you in our affliction, you will hear us or you will help us and you will save us. He begins to pray back to God how Solomon had laid out the house of the Lord and what Solomon put in that prayer of the dedication of the temple. Then he goes on and tells the Lord about this invading army, this enemy that's coming, Ammon and Moab and others. He said, they came, Lord, to cast us out of this possession which you have given us for an inheritance. He's talking to the Lord now like his daddy. In other words, somebody stole my bike you gave to me, and now what you going to do about it? For Lord, I want you to judge them because they're coming up not just against us, but they're coming up against you. He says in verse 12, listen, we understand the enemy. We have no might against this great company that's coming against us. Neither know we what to do. But our eyes are upon you. It's a good prayer. This is really is a good prayer. When you run out of your strength, tap into the strength of God. When you don't know what to do, God will tell you what to do and fix your eyes back on the Lord. This is the kind of spirit and attitude that pleases the Lord. The Lord, we're depending and our expectation is on you. Friend, whatever and whenever this kind of attitude is manifested before God, he answers graciously and he helps right away. Matter of fact, he's nearer than what you are ever imagining. Jehoshaphat's prayer in this prayer brought about a prophetic instructions. The spirit of the Lord begins to move upon the Levite called Je Gehazel. He's the son of Aspen. Gehazel means he will be seen of God. Our God, our behold of God, prayed until the prophetic began to move. Hang with me. Upon him came the spirit on Jehazel, came the spirit of the Lord, and through him came the answer. It was a prophetic answer promising King Jehoshaphat that God will give you victory over the Moabites and the Ammonites and whatever else invading force is coming up against you. Every enemy is going to be defeated today. 
you shall see in this story how the Lord goes to us and tells him in this prophetic word, you shall not need fight in this battle. I could stop preaching right there and let you run around the living room a little bit. When you get a word like that that comes from the Lord through moving of the spirit on Gehazel, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Listen, this prophetic gift, what we see here, is giving strategies for war. It is seen also in the book of Ephesians as I digress to lay a foundation. In the fourth chapter in verse 11 of Ephesians, you see the five-fold ministry gifts that are there. He gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers for the foundation, edification, inspiration, and feeding and instructions of the saints. Everything is impacted for the ministry to be strong. Uh, in this giftedness, you see the prophetic or the prophet gift. The prophet is one that, that is, is professing or edifying or professing, edifying and building up the believer. The prophetic gifts is building a believer up in Ephesians for service in ministry and equipping the saints to complete the job. The prophet here in the ministry came to set in order. The prophet comes to set in order to give clear directions to the voice of God and to bring about obedience and to stand against all disobedience. The prophetic word brings things in order. Revelations 19 and 10 says it like this, for this is the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy or the divine instructions declaring the purpose of God, whether to reprove, admonish, or even to comfort. That is the testimony of Jesus. Whatever the affliction is happening, whatever hardship one may be going through, God's got a word that's going to get you out of it. And that word moves through and by the Holy Spirit. First John 5 and 4 says, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. This prophetic ministry, the prophets is a seer, foreteller, is given insight, to give insight of what God has said and what God is getting ready to do. This ministry gift is to get an advantage over the adversary. It gives God's people something that speaks from the heavenly realm, positioning God's people for victory. And this is the word this morning, prophetically speaking to you, there will be victory in the valley. Grab it and hold on to it and tie something around it. This is the word God is speaking to Jehoshaphat and to the people of God that represents us, you and I today, is coming by the moving of the spirit upon Gehazel, behold of God. Gehazel said, hearken, listen to me, Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Ye shall not need fight in this battle. Set yourself, round verse 15, 17, set yourself down, mama would say. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which you, O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Let me say it again for you that might have missed it. He's speaking prophetically to God's people. Enemy is massing itself, amassing itself against God's people. Said in the valley, in an array that we are about to take you all out. But through prayer, a prophetic word came and he speaks again. You shall not need fight in this battle. He said, set yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. You got it now. It's in seeing and it's in knowing. Judah, Jerusalem, don't fear nor be dismayed, overwhelmed. The prophet here is speaking from the realms of heaven. God is telling us to see. And I believe this morning before I close, the Lord is saying, you've seen all what the virus and the pandemic is doing and the, and the graph going up. But I want somebody to see what God's about to do in the midst of confusion, what God can do when things are seemingly out of all control. Man don't know what to do. Created a virus, the virus, they don't know if it's going to work or not. But I know Jehovah Rofika, he's the God that healed it. See here, he says the happening of the spirit is manifesting now. What's happening in the spirit realm, see, is manifesting itself in the natural realm. Dr. House and I walk around the house now, and we start saying, look, we're going to stop praying and start saying, Lord, manifest it. I done already put the prayer out there. There's nothing wrong to keep praying, but I didn't shift the prayer over to, Lord, Lord, I'm looking for manifestation. Like the woman with the issue of blood, she knew that if she touched Jesus, she knew that he should touch his clothes, but touching anything that's touching him gave her the healing that she needed and she received the manifestation. Somebody put manifestation in the chat right now. He says the spiritual realm is showing you what's going to happen in the natural realm. I want you to see your deliverance. See 
your victory. See your financial release. Have I got you yet? Whatever you want God to do, begin to see it before you see it. See your healing. See your strength. See your comeback from a low place. See God giving you victory in the valley. Whatever you need from the Lord, by faith, see it. And you will see it come to pass. Now he tells him, tomorrow, go out against them. For the Lord will be with you. Go down into the valley with confidence of victory. Right where you are in the valley, start seeing that your tomorrow is going to be better than today. Judah, you inhabitants, they got up and they fell down. Judah and Jerusalem, here they are, all of them with Jehoshaphat. They fell down and began to worship. Worship in verse 19 through 20 of 2 Chronicles 20. They began to worship and fall down. I'm speaking to somebody uh, right now. Quit complaining about your valley. Why don't you turn up your praise and fall on your face and begin to worship? It's nothing more powerful than a believer to begin to worship. And you you have not seen the manifestation yet praise if you have not seen the manifestation yet I was speaking to a beautiful soul a few days ago they got called the church and, and left her number and she says I want to she sold a wonderful seed to the church and I began to ask to tell me your story she said years ago I met you all when you came to Las Vegas and the, and the Lord showed me says you were going to be my pastor I was this 33 young Mary and I just kids and she said but I knew that God had something great on your life and through that revival you were not preaching but you were there she said the Lord told her if you praise me you will birth the child she said she was much older by then and didn't need to have more children but she knew that she wanted one more child she said I was in that service and went into just a, a radical praise and worshiping I said woman you talking to me she said when ain't nothing else moving began to praise she said when I began to praise and begin to magnify the Lord doctor said I would never get pregnant but my praise got me pregnant the boy now is about 21 years young because she believed God for something that hadn't manifested itself yet. I'm talking to somebody. If you turn up your praise, you don't know what God can do. The enemy wants to shut your mouth, but I come to declare to you there's going to be victory in your valley. The anticipation here, the anticipation of coming victory. They began to praise God because the anticipation was for coming victory. It was loud. It was a long night. It was a long night, but the expectation of victory. Have you ever been in one of those neighborhoods where the party ain't started yet but nine o'clock your wall is rocking and their wall is rocking they're happy and partying about something it's time for you to turn up your volume and get your party rocking let your neighbor know the lights may be out but I got a little bit of power left to make sure that you're gonna hear me before I sit down giving them one short charge now here comes Jehoshaphat he tells them one short charge in verse 20 and I'm almost done it's less than 27 words. Hear me, O Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe in his prophet, and you shall prosper. Less than 27, 28 words. He gives them this profound charge. He leads them out to the battle and says, hold on. Wait a minute. I want you to remember two things. If nothing else, you're going to see something that's going to look like it's impossible. But I want you to remember Remember these two things. Believe the Lord. Don't look at faces. Don't look at people. Don't expect the negative people to try to encourage you. Look to the Lord. Believe the Lord and you shall be established, set firm. The enemy won't knock you off your feet. You'll be established and set on God's word. Believe the prophet. The prophet already told you. I'm giving you insight and leverage. You better buy some Bitcoin. Yeah, you better go on and hear what the man and woman of God is saying and invest yourself into a life that's about to change. Would to God I bought some Zoom stock. Excuse me. Would to God I would have bought me some Amazon stock. You hear things, but you don't react upon them. But the prophet is saying, boom, move, 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 and you shall be successful. The next morning, the divine instruction was given to them to have faith. Hezekiah, I'm Jehoshaphat, excuse me, told them we're not going out of here just 
dress any kind of way. I want you to put on your praise garments. Judah, I want you to go first. We want to make sure nobody's got weapons. Our weapons this morning is going to be prayer. Psalms 8 and 2, prayer will confuse the enemy. It'll steal the enemy. I want you to get your praise back, no matter what it looks like. If you're in the valley right now, get your praise back up. He said, listen, we're walking with a praise. It's confusing, but that's all we got. If all you got is a praise, then lift it up as high as you can and watch God move on your behalf. Tomorrow came and the heavens were answered and the blessings came. Thank God tomorrow is not like today. Tomorrow came and they were seeing themselves unarmed but established by God. Everything and every enemy that came against them was annihilated. I'm talking to somebody. Whatever been trying to chase you, you now got to chase on it. It will not escape. It will not get away. Jehoshaphat, the people came and took up the spoils that were scattered on the ground. Did you see the picture God had to bring us through a pandemic for you to get a stimulus check? Mm -hmm. God had to bring us through a pandemic for you to know that he is a sustainer. God had to bring you through a pandemic to get your unemployment back up again and still going to get you back on the job on time. That's the kind of God that we serve. Here they were down there picking up jewelry, picking up riches amongst the, amongst the dead bodies. Everything God promised, he said, strip it off of them. I come to tell the enemy, you're holding on to my stuff and I'm about to strip it up off of you. I want you to hear me before I go to my seat. Three days picking up spoils. Victory was in the valley. I thought here we would die, but God said you're going to be a long time. I can only imagine in my mind back and forth. Three days picking up stuff. What's the significance of the number three? The divine wholeness and completeness of God. The perfection number of God is in number three. We see in John 5 and 7. It says over there, there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Revelations 1 and 4, we see that here he comes, grace and peace. He that was, it is, and is to come. Three is God's power number. I'm going to show you completely, Clinton, before this month is out. I'm going to do something that's never been done before. I'm going to complete some stuff and perfect it while you're in the valley. Before this pandemic is over, I'm going to bless my people like never before. Raising up in power. Three is where the very throne room of God is at. He said, now when you get up out of this valley, remember to bless God in the valley of Baraka, which is the valley of blessing. There they begin to praise the Lord, shouting and decreeing what I thought was over. Now became my blessing. Let me speak to somebody. What you think is bringing you pain? God said, I'm going to bring a promise through the pain. What you think is about to destroy you? God said, I'm going to use it to elevate you. Everything this thing is pulling you down, you're only a band-aid, a rubber band being pulled back. I'm about to push you to where you're supposed to go. I set you up in this valley. You're looking for a way out, but I am your way out. There's going to be victory and rejoicing over your enemy. The Bible said before they got to the battle, they were praising God. When they got to the battle, they were praising God. When they came up out of the battle, they were praising God and worshiping God. I decree whatever has been attacking you. I decree whatever has been trying to overtake you. I decree every enemy that's been risen up against you. I pray the spirit of prayer come upon you right now in the name of Jesus. Prayer will turn your tomorrow into something brighter. I decree the sea, the day of God on your life. See your enemy running. See your problems getting smaller. I decree and declare your time is now. Go on, get up out that chair. Walk around your house and say, devil, this is your last day. The man of God just told me tomorrow is my day of victory. Let me act like it. Let me praise like it. Let me shout like it. Let me believe God like it. I'm walking up out of a valley that I thought I'd never get out of. But thank God for his goodness. I hear you, Lord. It was in the valley of dry bones that everybody came back to life. The Bible said as the wind of the spirit began to blow, everything started coming together. I prophesy in your life everything that the enemy has tried to dry up and kill. He said it's coming back together. God said it's coming back together right there in the low place in a food line. Can't get no bread in the food 
food store trying to get something to eat. God said, right there in the line, I'm going to bless you. You will never forget this valley I bless you in, right in the food line. I'm going to bring it back to you. You can remember this year and say, it was in the valley. God gave me victory. I know the mountaintop, but in the valley, God gave me victory. Body aching, mind aching, things are going bad, but I see victory in my valley. How do I see it, preacher? I'm checking your praise. I'm checking your shout. I'm checking your hallelujah. I'm checking your thank you, Jesus. I'm praising your praise to God. What's wrong with you, believer? God told the prophet to tell you, you ain't got to fight this one. I got your back. Get up out that chair. Go on and walk around the house. Tell the devil, it's over for you. God has brought me through. Because victory is in my valley. Hallelujah. Victory in your valley. The Lord just spoke to me and said, some of you should be praising the Lord because you have not been in the food line yet. Come on. Driving past, looking at people lined up. And you got everything in your house in the middle of a valley. Pray with me now. Father, we bless you. You sent your word and you healed us and made us better. I pray to God that someone right there in the home, in that car, on that plane, walking down the street, hear the word of the Lord. Let them know that you're the God of the valley. You're the God of the mountaintop. God, through you, we have faith and determination that we're going to get through this. And we're going to win in the end. But you gave a word that set us on a course to change our life forever. And then you initiated, or you stimulated praise. <laughs> to say, praise me in advance. My God. Before you get to victory, praise me in advance. Praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. What a word. I know you're watching. You're probably shouting about right now. That was a word right there. Just get up and praise him. I know you're already doing it, but I could feel a praise down in my sanctified soul. I was thinking about that song when you were saying uh, victory in the valley. I was saying, thank you, Lord, for all you've done, done for me because it could have been me yes. outdoors Hallelujah. with no shoes and no clothes, but, it, was but it wasn't. It wasn't me. And it wasn't you. No, no, no. And that was a word. I don't know if you're expecting something, but I'm expecting something in 24 hours. Yes. Tomorrow. My God, Pastor. I feel, I feel a 24-hour turnaround. Against. You know, because I heard you say it. Yes, yes. Believe the prophet. <laughs> I believe you. I Let believe the this. word God said. The Lord just said somebody mm. right now is going to have a three-day pickup. Come You'll on. be picking up stuff for three days. My God. Cash app. This is sending checks, just mm. download it. Stuff's gonna be coming to you. You don't know where it's coming from for the Jesus. next three days. My it's God. gonna be coming. I'm not speaking a hype or trying to give you mm -hmm. something to hang on to. I'm speaking a word to somebody. Yes. I need a three day blessing. A three day let blessing. Me, let me remind you that three is so powerful because at the three days, mm -hmm. they kept Jesus in the grave. Come on now. But on the third day, <laughs> my Bible says he got up with all power. He got up. All power. All power. All power. <laughs> If you can, right there in your living room, get up and turn around three Woo! times. Turn around, 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 turn around. Now give God a shout and a clap and tell the devil it's over in my house. It's over in my house. your door. Holler to your neighbor, knock on your door. Oh, <laughs> 
bless you. We love you. Grace and peace from the Lord Jesus Christ. May his blessings, favor, and love cover you. My